everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this evening update. I hope you've been enjoying your day and we're going to be looking at what is happening for the North Atlantic as well as the Eastern Pacific. So let's go on to the satellite imagery and we're kickstarting with the Atlantic Basin. So there you can see those two main areas associated with Philippe. So there's a splitting situation going on as we can see here and uh, there you can see the island of Bermuda. So a lot of the tropical storm conditions are actually staying offshore right now uh, maybe still some gusty winds and some periods of a bit of rainfall however that area could still make its way up to the north and bring impacts to portions of the northeastern u.s as well as atlantic canada not as a major system of course and by the way it has become post-tropical so that final advisory from the National Hurricane Center has been issued on the system. But as we look across other areas, going to the main development region, there we see those clusters of showers and thunderstorms. That right there is in association with the tropical wave. And there is another that is emerging from the African coast. That one could develop as we're going to be heading into next week, maybe becoming a tropical depression by the midweek. And who knows, maybe a tropical storm thereafter, but only if conditions are conducive. We know that the waters are very warm but that's not the only factor that leads to development those upper level winds have to also be conducive and there should also be that moist environment so a lot of dry air intrusion can prevent significant development and result in these systems falling apart rather than getting themselves together now let's head into the caribbean and surrounding areas and we're kickstarting things looking at northern south america we can even see panama and a tip of uh, costa rica as well there we can see some thunderstorms developing across many areas some of this activity uh, is in association with that tropical wave in the eastern Caribbean and uh, there has been some increase in rainfall activity for the ABC islands, Aruba, Curacao and Bonaire. So those islands have experienced some level of rainfall increase in the latter part of this week and I mean that's some really great news considering the fact that there hasn't really been much this hurricane season and then in parts of the Windward Islands, uh, maybe a couple of stray showers moving through down to Trinidad, we see that there's a bit more activity maybe some heavy downpours at times potentially some overcast conditions with some shower activity for Tobago but uh, let's go further up north here and we can see that across most of the rest of the Lesser Antilles there isn't much happening so there is some dry air which is moving in uh, coming from the Atlantic we'll go on to that map very soon but there we can see those showers and thunderstorms in association with the tropical wave moving through now as this tropical wave continues to propagate west it will likely continue to increase that rainfall chance for other areas eventually as we head into next week uh, there could be areas such as Jamaica experiencing some uh, rainfall activity some increased rainfall activity as a result of that tropical wave and a lot of heavy rainfall as we know it can trigger flooding so that will be something to look out for as we head into especially around Monday so there could be uh, quite a bit of increase in rainfall activity at that time but across the island right now as I speak there is actually a lot of heavy rain in my area quite certain that is inducing some level of flooding somewhere uh, in Montego Bay so I'm sure of that because of the heavy rainfall that we have been experiencing I hope everyone is doing okay and uh, that is kind of the thing with these afternoon showers and thunderstorms so as they develop across the island they can actually help to induce some periods of heavy rainfall which unleash flooding and there is also some activity developing across some parts of Cuba going to Hispaniola and earlier in parts of uh, Puerto Rico as well much not going on for the Virgin Islands a bit of activity moving through the Bahamas and Turson Caicos Islands, nothing too crazy. And then over in parts of Central America, some showers and thunderstorms developing this afternoon. And so now we're going on to that disturbance, that new tropical wave emerging from the African coast. And here we can see that the formation chance is at 50% through the next seven days, and it is at a low 10% chance for the next two days. So imminent formation of it is unlikely. And uh, should it manage to become at least a tropical depression, which is uh, expected maybe by the middle part of next week. So there's that possibility that it could become a tropical depression, even a tropical storm, then uh, we're going to be seeing that curve up to the northwest that more of a northwest track expected off the system but should it fail to develop and remain as a tropical wave it will likely continue propagating toward the west so as of now there's that 50 percent chance that we could see something and i actually mentioned in my update yesterday morning that models have been showing that curve that wasn't really being reflected on the nhc's graphic at the time but as time went by especially as we head into this morning and then 
this evening's update here we are seeing this curve expected now so we'll have to wait and see but of course i'll continue to keep you posted now going on to conditions out there let's take a look at this dry air map so there we can see some of those bright colors so as we head to the shade of orange go into that red and even the pink shade that is indicative of denser areas of dry air so there we can see some of that dry air moving into the eastern islands the lesser antilles as we saw earlier there isn't much happening so it's likely been a very hot and sunny day for some of you guys you can let me know in the comments big contrast to what was happening earlier this week with philippe and all that increase in rainfall activity but now here we're seeing all this dry air moving in so going on to the winter map now this has been the reason for philippe's struggle the main reason so uh, it might be a bit confusing but there we can see the white outline of different land areas and then uh those lines so the green lines they represent areas of favorable shear so we're talking about those conducive upper level winds that wouldn't interfere much if something is trying to develop and there's actually that tropical wave in the caribbean so icon is interestingly showing now that we might see something try to form near jamaica try to become of it but there is very low confidence low confidence on that happening but once the system is going to be making its way by with a lot of activity then those flooding rains could be induced across jamaica but going back to this map here so risking that there is some generally conducive shear across the caribbean a lot of those red lines across most of the gulf and heading into the vicinity of philippe now quickly hopping over into the pacific there you can see our two systems tropical storm lydia as well as invest 99e so that disturbance which is being closely watched for development that formation chart uh, that formation chance remains pretty high at 80 percent and they were seeing that little curve at the end of the shaded area area here suggesting that it will be making its way into mexico so because of that expected land interaction especially if the system is not going to be moving very slowly then it could struggle to make it to tropical storm status we'll see what happens with it but models have been suggesting that it could ma actually manage to become a tropical storm but nevertheless it is going to be bringing that all that heavy rainfall to parts of mexico which will likely bring flooding same story with lydia here lydia is also likely to make that curve and it is just below hurricane status right now so says sustained winds are around 70 miles per hour at the maximum and it is moving to the west at six miles per hour so it might become a hurricane but won't uh, retain that intensity or that tidal for long due to the wind shear which is currently impacting it but again it is likely going to be making its way into mexico bringing some impacts as we head into next week and then whatever is left of these systems could move into the gulf and bring some impacts to gulf coast states mostly for florida as what models have been showing but there could be changes however i'm here to keep you guys posted as per usual so so that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you in this update and I hope you found it to be quite informative but if you have any questions please do leave them in the comments as always and you can share your thoughts there as well and remember to always be weather wise.